Hello and welcome. Today we are comparing the JavaScript keywords var, let, and const. And to do that, we also need to discuss the concept of scope in JavaScript. Let's get started. Today we're discussing the keywords var, let, and const. All three are used to initialize variables in JavaScript. And all of this will lead to a discussion of scope. But let's start with the keyword var, and we'll declare a variable x, then set it equal to 1. This is what was done in JavaScript from the very beginning up until 2015 when we introduced the keywords let and const. Var responds a little differently, and it's not always as good. As a matter of fact, var is pretty much relegated to legacy code, which is old code at this point, in preference for let and const. And let's look at why. We can define a variable like x with the keyword var, and we can log that to the console and see the value just fine. We'll see the value over there of 1. However, var doesn't throw an error if we redefine, redeclare that same variable, and now that variable's two. But imagine if you're working on a team or you've got different files of JavaScript that are all pulled into a project. This could get very confusing and there could be problems, especially when an error doesn't happen and you really need that error to realize that something has been defined with the same uh, variable name. So when we use the keyword let and attempt to do this, we get an error, and that is actually desirable in this case. Now both var and let will allow reassignment, and so there is no error here because we didn't use the keyword let again. We just declared the variable once, but then we reassign the value, and that's okay. If we use the keyword const, this will throw an error. And this makes const the preference for most. You want to use const whenever you can, and then use let when you know you're going to need to reassign a value. But if you know you won't be reassigning a value, const is short for constant, a constant value, uh, just use the keyword const. Otherwise, use let and leave var for legacy code. But now we need to discuss scope and the differences because var has a different scope, and really the way it responds to scopes is different than let and const. As we move our discussion towards scope, let's start with global scope. And with global scope, we define a variable, give it a value, and it is available everywhere. And it doesn't matter with global scope if we use var or let or even const. They're all global variables when we define, define them in the global scope. So all three of these variables are global variables at this point. We have not defined the opposite of a global scope, which is a local scope. Inside of a local scope, and there can be more than one type of a local scope. As a matter of fact, there's two. There's block scope, and inside of these curly braces, we can once again define, even with uh, let or const, we can define a variable again and not get an error, as we see no error in the console. Um, the other type I mentioned as a local scope is a function. And so for local scope, we have block scope and function scope, and they are not exclusive. We can put a block inside of a function. We can put another function inside of a function. I'll create a function now, and this scope, and I'll use const here, is also a local scope. Now when we look at local scope versus global scope, the variable we define y, for example, is not available. This value uh, pair here, y, the variable, equals 4, is not available in the global scope. So if I comment out the y in the global scope, 
and then we put a console log statement in the global scope once again and we try to log y we should get an error and that's right we got a reference error y is not defined it is not defined in the global scope right now it is defined in a local scope and if we try to do the same thing inside of our local scope we get four to the console no problem we can see the same with Z if we comment that out in the global scope as you might expect we will get an error reference error it's not defined but if we add it to our function and then we need to call our function we get four from our block scope and we get five from our function sent to the console and let's take our local scope that's a block scope let's put it inside of our function and that works too now when we call our function we log the value of z and the value is inside the scope of the function which is also called function scope but this is a local scope but this is inside the function so it's also a function scope and this local scope we've created another kind of environment if you will for a, a block of code with the curly braces and this is inside the function so let's come back up here and instead of logging the value of z to the console let's log the value of y and at the same time we'll uncomment y in the global scope now let's see what happens the value of y that gets logged to the console the first time is 2 and that's defined in the global scope because the values from local scope cannot move upwards they do not go to the parent and this scope is nested inside of a function so it will not move up into the function scope it stays within its block so the only way that the function gets a value for the variable y is to get it from the global scope that is available to all so I think you can see a pattern here the global scope is available to all it can go in functions and beyond that it can go into other functions that are nested in a function it can go into blocks of code that are in a function now I've just got the two curly braces here to define a block of code but you've seen blocks of code before not just with curly braces like this but you've seen it with if statements and I'll just put if true and that code should still execute you have seen uh, curly braces which essentially create blocks of code with for loops I won't put in the full body of the for loop there you've seen curly braces with switch statements and a variety of things so what you're doing when you have that is creating a local scope that is a block of code and if you use let or const inside a code block it works perfectly fine and it will not conflict with something that is in a parent or in the global scope but these values like the value of y here as I declared with const is not available to this function anywhere except in this block of code in this code block with the curly braces likewise it's not available in the global scope so the code values or the variable values can be passed down global into functions functions into other functions or blocks of code but they cannot be passed up scope is a concept that is hard to take in and process at first and so I'm going to delete what we have 
and we'll come back and do one more example as a walkthrough to help you process this information and hopefully explain it as clearly as possible. So we'll once again start out in the global scope with X, Y, and Z, and we'll put in some console log statements using template literals that make it just a little bit clearer. See, now we have global one, two, and three. The next thing we'll do is create a function, just like we had before, function my funk. And inside this function, we will once again log to the console the three values. But here I will put function. We haven't called the function yet. And then inside the function, we'll create a block. And inside this block, we'll once again log all three values. And we'll make sure it says block there. Now we aren't seeing those extras until we call the function. So at the very bottom, I'll need to call the function. And now we see global one, two, three, function one, two, three, block level one, two, three. And they're all saying one, two, three, because even though we go into the function, which has its own local scope, and even though we go into the block, which then has its own local scope, there are no extra declarations. So the block looks for those definitions and doesn't find them in the block, so it moves up to the parent and it doesn't find them in the function, once again, it moves on up to the uh, global scope and gets the one, two, three. And function does the same when it comes up there. Actually, function would look up here first, pull in the values, and then the block would look up to the function and pull the values from the parent. So it's always pulling from the parent. Let's make a definition or two or a declaration or two and look at a little bit of the difference now in function and block scope within a function. So we'll declare x inside the function, which is no problem, and we'll give it a value of 10. And also inside the function, we'll redeclare z, and we'll give it a value of 5. Now, when we look at the console, we have global 1, 2, 3, function 10 to 5, and block level 10 to 5. Block is pulling values from the parent, and my function is pulling the y value it needs from the global environment, the global scope. It pulls that in and has 10 to 5. We have no definitions in the block level, and so it is also 10 to 5. So let's go ahead and add some definitions at the block level. And as you might expect, in this order, we get 10 to 5 from the function, and at the block level, we get 11 to 6, because we defined x and z at the block level. But let's make a change and see what else changes in our output. All I'm going to do is move the console log lines of the function to after the block of code. This is our block scope. This is our function scope. And the whole thing is the function. So we'll move the console log lines that say function after the block. We definitely got a different result. Global is still one, two, three. Block is still 11, two, six. But now function, instead of 10, two, five, is 11, two, five. And that is because when you use the keyword var, it is function scoped. Therefore, when we set x equal to 11 inside the block, 
because we used var, that value is available outside of the block in the function. Var is function scoped, not block scoped. However, using const, which is block scoped, only allowed the value of six to be available inside the block because const and let are both block scoped. And therefore, five is what is still printed in the console for the function. Giving it a value of six did not change the value when it reached here. However, var did. And that is worth noting when you're thinking about function scoped and block scoped variables. And that is a lot to take in today. So a quick recap, global scope, it's not in a function or in a block. It's really not desirable overall because it can cause mistakes and confusion because global variables are available everywhere. And sometimes more than one thing could be changing the value of that variable. And there's other things that could also cause problems that uh, we could get into with more advanced topics. But global variables overall are not desirable. It would be preferred to have variables with local scope, and those variables are in a function or in a block of code with curly braces. Uh, and of course, those are not exclusive. You can have functions nested inside of functions. You can have blocks nested inside of functions. var instantiates function scoped variables. So if you do use var to instantiate a variable, it will ignore the curly braces if it is in a block of code. If it's within what would be considered a block scope, var will ignore that and it will go ahead and break out of that and change the values above um, the block of code. However, let and const respect the curly braces. They respect the block scope value. And that is modern JavaScript. Overall, you want to use const and let. And of course, only use const unless you know you need to reassign the value. Use let if you know you will be reassigning the value. And just avoid var and leave it in the legacy code if possible. Hi, I'm Dave, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to keep striving for daily progress instead of perfection. Subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be alerted when I post new tutorials. I'll see you next time.